Top 10 Dangerous Guns in the Old Wild West. Here goes my vote. Wouldn't it be interesting to know what firearms the gunslingers of the Old Wild West carry? Well, today we're about to show you the top 10 dangerous gunslingers' guns in the Old Wild West that ruled the lawless frontier. Prepare for a thrilling journey back in time. Number 10. Colt 1849 Pocket Model The Colt 1849 Pocket Model was a tiny yet formidable cap and ball revolver that left a big impact on the Old Wild West. Despite its diminutive size or perhaps because of it, this revolver became Colt's best-selling firearm of the 19th century, and some argue it was the most popular revolver at the time. Over the course of its production from 1850 to 1873, approximately 330,000 examples were manufactured, making it a sought-after sidearm among both civilians and military personnel, although it was never officially issued. In the pre-Civil War era, the Occult 1849 pocket model found a special place in the hearts of those in the West, particularly in California. Thousands were purchased and the demand for this little five-shooter was so high that it often sold for much more than its factory retail price. The revolver's success was attributed to its compact size and clever engineering, as Colt was able to streamline the manufacturing process and reduce the number of parts required, resulting in an inexpensive and lightweight sidearm. The popularity of the Colt Pocket 49er extended to various walks of life in the Wild West. Miners, gamblers, merchants, lawmen, and even women of ill repute found it to be an ideal and easily handled defensive firearm. Whether hidden in a coat, vest pocket, or discreetly tucked away in the folds of a lady's full skirt, this gun was a symbol of power and protection. The gun's efficiency and versatility made it a favorite among soldiers as well. The Colt 1849 Pocket Model's legacy in the Old Wild West was cemented as one of the most beloved and widely used firearms of the time. Its compact design and reliable performance made it the perfect companion for anyone looking to stay secretly well-heeled and protected in the unpredictable and dangerous frontier. Next up on our list of dangerous gunslingers' guns in the Old Wild West is the number 9. Colt 1851 Navy Revolver this belt-sized revolver earned its nickname as the percussion peacemaker for good reason. It was one of the best balanced and smoothest handling revolvers in the Caplock era, and its popularity extended far beyond its contemporaries. The Colt 1851 Navy became the preferred sidearm for many during the pre-metallic cartridge era. It was known for its reliability, accuracy, and ease of use, making it a favorite among both good and bad men alike. Legends of the Wild West like James Butler Wild Bill Hickok relied on the 1851 Navy as a trusted companion. It wasn't just famous gunslingers who wielded this revolver. Even outlaw gangs like the James Younger Gang and law enforcement agencies like the Texas Rangers and Pinkerton Detectives saw its value. The revolver's fame didn't stop there. California bandit Tiburcio Vasquez, notorious shootist John Wesley Harden, and Major Frank North with the Pawnee Scouts all favored the Colt 1851 Navy. Even future Confederate General Robert E. Lee had a preference for this revolver during his time stationed in Antebellum, Texas. The Colt 1851 Navy was particularly sought after in the gold fields of California, where it sold for a premium well above its retail price back east. Between 1850 and 1873, nearly a quarter million of these 36 caliber six guns were produced making it one of the most popular revolvers of its time. Number 8. 1860 Colt Army Revolver As we continue our journey through the Wild West's most dangerous gunslinger's guns, we come across the legendary 1860 Colt Army Revolver. Produced from 1860 until 1873, this iconic firearm stands as Colt's third most produced percussion handgun and is revered as the epitome of 44 caliber percussion revolvers. The 1860 Army model was designed as a lighter and more manageable successor to the bigger and cumbersome Dragoon revolvers of the time. Its immediate success was undeniable, and for good reason. Of the 200,500 Army models turned out, a staggering 127,156 were purchased by the Union government during the Civil War. As a result, it became the primary revolver used by federal troops during the bloody conflict. This six-gun was an absolute powerhouse, 
easily holstered on a man's hip and boasting stopping power nearly comparable to its larger Dagoon counterparts. Its 8-inch barreled version, along with the few thousand produced with the 7.5-inch barrels, quickly became a solid favorite among frontiersmen of the mid-19th century. The Colt 1860 Army Revolver saw service with various prestigious groups, including the U.S. Cavalry and the renowned Texas Rangers. But its reputation didn't stop with lawmen and military personnel. The 1860 Army also found its way into the hands of notorious bad men like the infamous John Wesley Hardin, Mormon Avenger Porter Rockwell, and the infamous James Brothers. Even Texas outlaw Sam Bass couldn't resist the allure of this potent firearm. Number 7. Springfield Trapdoor Rifle Our next entry on the list of dangerous gunslingers' guns in the Old Wild West is the Springfield Trapdoor Rifle. Known on the frontier as the needle gun due to its long firing pin, this rifle has a fascinating history that spans the Indian fighting era to the early buffalo hunting years. The Springfield Trapdoor started its life in 1865 as an Allen-converted Civil War muzzleloader. It was initially chambered to fire a 58 caliber rimfire metallic cartridge. Shortly after, in 1866, the famed second model Allen conversion was introduced, featuring a sleeved barrel that accommodated the powerful 50 to 70 center fire cartridge. This upgrade proved crucial for the U.S. Army's ability to withstand Indian attacks along Wyoming's Bozeman Trail during the Hayfield and Wagon Box fights in 1867. One of the rifle's most famous users was none other than the legendary Buffalo Bill, William F. Cody himself. He used the 50-70 Allen, affectionately called Lucretia Borgia, to hunt hundreds of buffalo for meat. Buffalo Bill considered his rifle beautiful and deadly, just like the infamous noblewomen of the Italian Renaissance it was named after. The 1873 Springfield Trapdoor quickly became the primary weapon of the Indian Fighting Army and remained so until the mid-1890s. Initially used to subjugate Native Americans, it later found a role in protecting Indians from unscrupulous whites. The trapdoor was carried by Custer's 7th Cavalry at the infamous Battle of the Little Bighorn, and it played a significant part in other battles with Northern Plains tribes as well as the Apaches, Comanches, and other Southwestern Indians. The moniker Trapdoor was officially adopted with the second 1873 model, which introduced a trapdoor and compartment in the buttstock for storing cleaning tools and a broken shell extractor in 1877. These rifles were also popular with civilians, who were willing to pay hefty prices for lost military Springfields. Additionally, many surplus trapdoors were converted to sporters, making them sought-after firearms among budget-minded homesteaders. Among the most famous of the Springfield Trapdoor models is the 1873 version. The carbine made in 1875 known as the first model was the same model carried by Lt. Col. George Custer's ill-fated 7th U.S. Cavalry into battle at the Little Bighorn River on June 25, 1876. The rifle, although improved over the years, remained the primary shoulder weapon of the military during the Indian campaigns. Number 6 Winchester Model 1866 Rifle Next on our list of dangerous gunslingers' guns in the Old Wild West is the Winchester Model 1866 Rifle, originally known as the Improved Henry. This brass-framed 44 rimfire lever-actioned rifle earned the nickname Yellow Boy from Native Americans due to its distinctive bright yellow brass receiver. Over 170,000 of these iconic rifles were produced between 1866 and 1898, long after centerfire ammunition had surpassed the 66's weaker rimfire cartridges in strength and popularity. Despite this, the Yellow Boy remained a favorite on the frontier after the Civil War. One of the most significant moments in the rifle's history occurred during the Battle of Little Bighorn in June 1876. General George Custer's Arikara Scout Bloody Knife and his Indian adversaries were among those carrying the 1866 Winchester into battle. The rifle played a role in the devastating defeat of the 7th Cavalry. This 1870 photograph proudly displays a Sioux warrior showing off his 1866 Yellow Boy Winchester alongside an Anglo partner. Despite the remarkable advances in firearms technology during the late 19th century, the 66 Winchester retained its popularity and continued to be manufactured until 1898. The Yellow Boy was coveted by American Indians for its repeating rifle capabilities and the eye-catching brass receiver. 
it found its ways into the hands of prominent figures like Union Pacific Railroad's chief engineer General Grenville Dodge and notorious desperado Bill Doolin. Even Sioux Medicine Man Sitting Bull alongside many Texas Rangers, Army Scouts, military officers, hunters, and ranchers favored this reliable and versatile firearm. During the ill-fated Battle of Little Bighorn, Crazy Horse's warriors effectively used several 1866 Winchesters to defeat Custer's troops, making a notable chapter in the rifle's storied history. Now let's take a look into the fifth entry on our list of the top 10 dangerous gunslingers guns in the Old Wild West. Number 5. S&W Model 3 American Revolver Introduced in 1870, the 44 Santa Fire Smith & Wesson Model 3 First Model American holds the distinction of being the first practical large-bore US-made metallic cartridge revolver. This six-shooter laid the groundwork for future successful S&W models such as the 44 Russian, 45 Schofield, and the new Model No. 3 Single Action. The Model 3 quickly became highly popular in the West due to its reliability and performance. This top break six-gun was not only issued to the US cavalry, but was also the sidearm of choice for numerous renowned frontiersmen. Among its notable carriers were William F. Cody, better known as Buffalo Bill, Army Scout Texas Jack Omohundro, and El Paso City Marshal Dallas Stoudemire. In addition to its use by well-known figures like Buffalo Bill and Texas Jack, the Model 3 was also favored by General William Palmer, the builder of the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. Furthermore, it was a vital part of the armament used during the renowned Wheeler U.S. Geological Survey of the southwestern United States from 1871 to 1873. The versatility of the Model 3 extended beyond the American borders, the Russian variation of this big-bore metallic cartridge revolver found its way into the hands of notorious figures such as John Wesley Harden, a feared gunslinger of the Old West, and James Younger gang member Charlie Pitts. Even New Mexico Sheriff Pat Garrett and gunman King Fisher admired the S&W Model 3 for its reliability and firepower. The Model 3 American revolver made such a significant impact that it caught the attention of Russian military attaché General Alexander Golov. In 1871, the first of many large contracts for the Russian military were being filled, solidifying the S&W Model 3's reputation as a formidable firearm. We come to a legendary firearm. The Number 4 1874 Sharps Rifle Commonly known as the Buffalo Rifle, this powerful single-shot firearm earned its nickname Buffalo Rifle for good reason. An 1887 government survey credited it with shooting more buffalo than any other gun during the peak hide hunting years from 1867 to 1882. While the 1874 model was actually introduced in 1871 and based on the rare 1869 model, it wasn't officially designated as the 1874 model until around 1876. The 1874 Sharps rifle was a formidable weapon that played a significant role in shaping the history of the American West. With just 12,445 of various Model 74s produced, including the popular target rifles, they had a profound impact on the Plains Indians' nomadic way of life. Its reputation as the Buffalo rifle was well earned, as it was made to fire an assortment of 40, 45, and 50 caliber loadings, with some guns weighing as much as 25 pounds. One of the most remarkable feats involving the 1874 Sharps was at the 1874 Battle of the Adobe Walls in the Panhandle of Texas. Buffalo hunter Billy Dixon fired a borrowed 1874 Sharps Big 50, 50 to 90, at an Indian warrior from an incredible distance of 1,538 yards. Dixon's shot hit its mark, seriously wounding the Indian, and earned the 1874 Sharps rifle the nickname Shoots Far or Shoots Today, Kill Tomorrow gun among the Plains Indians. This iconic rifle, along with others like it, played a crucial role in settling the post-Civil War frontier. It's no exaggeration to say that most of the buffalo harvested during the hide hunting years of 1867 to 1882 were taken down with the 1874 Sharps. The buffalo rifle's accuracy, range, and stopping power made it the go-to firearm for hunters and settlers alike. Number 3. Colt 1873 Single Action Army Now we come to one of the most iconic handguns in the world, the Colt 1873 Single Action Army Revolver. Affectionately known as the Peacemaker, this legendary six-gun was undoubtedly the favorite and archetypal sidearm of the American frontier. Originally designed as a cavalry sidearm, 
the Colt 1873 quickly gained popularity and became the weapon of choice for cowboys, lawmen, and outdoorsmen of all kinds. From the Texas Rangers to the Arizona Rangers and those who rode the Owl Hoot Trail, the Peacemaker was a symbol of authority and justice in the untamed West. The Colt 1873 Single Action Army earned a plethora of colorful nicknames, including the Equalizer, Hogleg, and Judge Colt and his Jury of Six. However, it was best known for its reputation as the Peacemaker, because of its role in maintaining peace and order on the lawless frontier. This revolver was favored by an impressive roster of Wild West legends, including Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, the Daltons, John Selman, Lawman Elfago, Lawman Elfago Baca, and Judge Roy Bean, to name just a few. Its popularity extended beyond famous names, and countless others relied on this reliable and powerful firearm. The Colt 1873 Single Action Army was produced in various powerful chamberings, most notably 45 Colt, 44, 40, and 38, 40. With 192,000 units made by the end of the 19th century, it outsold all its competitors and solidified its position as the premier six-gun of the Old West. Number 2. 1873 Winchester Rifle It's no exaggeration to claim that the 1873 lever-action Winchester rifle is arguably the most famous rifle of the Old West. Introduced as Winchester's first center-fire firearm, this legendary rifle was manufactured from 1873 to 1919, with a grand total of 720,000 guns made. By 1898, an estimated 525,000 plus Winchester 73 rifles had left the factory, solidifying its place as one of the most beloved firearms of its time. Similar to its predecessor, the 1866 model, the 1873 Winchester boasted a slab-sided design, making it the perfect choice for horsemen throughout the West. Its simple toggle and link internal action made it easy to maintain in the field, and its compact size made it ideally suited to be carried in a saddle scabbard. Hunters, cowboys, lawmen, outlaws, and outdoorsmen from various lands all gravitated towards the Winchester 73. It was chambered for popular rounds such as 4440, 3840, and 3230. Interestingly, the introduction of the Winchester rifle also spurred other gun manufacturers like Colt. Remington and Smith & Wesson to produce revolvers chambered in the same Winchester calibers. This gave rise to the practical and favored habit of the frontier of pairing one's rifle and revolver in the same caliber. The iron-framed lever gun earned its reputation as the premier choice of the post-1874 Texas Rangers, who relied on its versatility, ease of carrying, and low maintenance during the demanding duties. Who relied on its versatility, ease of carrying, and low maintenance during their demanding duties. Renowned figures of the Old West such as William F. Buffalo Bill Cody, Montana rancher Granville Stewart, Pat Garrett, and notorious outlaws like Butch Cassidy, Bell Starr, and Billy the Kid all counted the Winchester 73 as their trusted companion. Even the deputy U.S. Marshals of Fort Smith saw the value of the 73 Winchester for its adaptability and caliber, ease of carrying in a saddle scabbard, and low maintenance requirements in the field. On November 1, 1892, after successfully taking down the notorious Indian Territory outlaw Ned Christie, deputy marshals posed for photographs with their Winchester 1873 rifles, showcasing their prized firearms. Its popularity extended beyond the borders of the United States, as Comanche leader Quanah Parker was among the Westerners who favored the 1873 Winchester as their lever-action rifle of choice. Number 1. Double-Barreled Shotgun Surprising as it may be to some gun enthusiasts, the double-barreled shotgun, whether in caplock or metallic cartridge form, holds the top spot as one of the most important and widely used firearms on the frontier. For many pioneers venturing out west, investing in weaponry took a backseat to the essential expenses of making the overland trek. However, the double-barreled shotgun proved to be a game-changer due to its unmatched versatility and affordability. Whether it was a muzzle loader or a breech loader, scatter guns from both domestic and foreign manufacturers became the mainstay for settlers, lawmen, express companies, American Indians, soldiers, gunfighters, miners, ranchers, and hunters alike. Virtually everyone in need of a reliable firearm recognized the value of the trustees side by side. It earned the nickname Crowd Tamer because the mere sight of a shotgun could deter any mob from carrying out violent acts. In the rugged and often hostile environment of the Old West, having a double-barreled shotgun at hand provided a sense of security and confidence. The shotgun's versatility was unparalleled, 
loaded with shot for hunting game on one barrel and charged with a slug for self-defense on the other. It became the preferred choice for those venturing into potentially dangerous territories. The ability to switch between different loads with ease made it the true workhorse of the era. Whether it was a domestically produced scattergun or an imported model, the double-barreled shotgun was cherished by all who wielded it. The 1878 Colt, in particular, is regarded as one of the finest shotguns ever made in the United States. This is all for today. Our journey through the Old Wild West would not be complete without your presence. We'd appreciate if you liked this video, subscribed for more adventures, and shared it with your family and friends.